In this video, I'll be covering how to connect an access point managed by the WatchGuard Cloud to a cloud-managed Firebox using a mobile VPN with Ike V2 connection. So the first thing I'll cover are the prerequisites to enable this AP to connect to the VPN. And then we'll just jump right into configuring the access point settings that are required to get the VPN to work. So the first prerequisite is that your Firebox is managed in WatchGuard Cloud. And then you must have the mobile VPN with Ike V2 enabled. And within that, you don't have to create any specific users or groups. The default settings would work, or if you already had existing users or groups that you're using for normal mobile VPN access, the VPN configuration for the APs will be added alongside that. And then the other main requirement is that your access points are managed by the WatchGuard Cloud. And when you go to configure these access points, at least one SSID needs to have NAT mode enabled in order for the VPN option to be available. And here in the WatchGuard Cloud, I have selected the Firebox that I'll be working with, and I'm looking at the device configuration. I need to verify that the mobile VPN with Ike V2 is currently enabled. So I will select the mobile VPN tile. And on this device, I've already configured it. If you need information on that, please see our other training material. The name of the VPN doesn't matter here. As long as the IP address and domain name are accessible from the location where the AP is deployed, that's what's important here. In order for this AP to connect, it needs to have IPsec ports and protocols open upstream. So if there is another firewall or some other device ahead of the access point, make sure it is allowing IPsec communication so that these Ike V2 connections can reach this Firebox. Beyond that, I do not need to set up any other authentication domains. I do not need to set up any users or groups. I can just leave the defaults. And if you already had other users and groups set up here that you were using for mobile VPN access, those will not be impacted. However, you need to be aware that the APs themselves each of their connections will count as one mobile VPN user, so you need to factor that into the total user count, as each Firebox model has a different maximum number of mobile VPN users. The virtual pool, you can either just leave the default or define your own. Again, it doesn't really matter as far as these APs are concerned. So this is a default setup right here. I haven't had to modify anything. I've only supplied a name and the public IP for the access point to connect to. That's all I need to do on the Firebox side, but you must have the mobile VPN with Hike V2 configured before you set up the VPN access on the wireless AP. So the next step is to move into the AP configuration, and what I will be doing here is using the access point sites to create this VPN connection within a template. That way I can deploy this template across many different access points so that they will all be able to access the same Firebox using a VPN. So I will select the access point sites and I already had a site configured so I will modify this existing one that's already deployed. I already have an SSID that's deployed and this can remain, but this SSID can be used for other purposes. This is not currently granting any access via the VPN to the networks behind the Firebox. So I will create a new SSID by clicking on the SSID tile and then clicking Add SSID at the top. And for this example, I'll just call it Corp VPN, and I will leave it as a private SSID on both radios. I will input my passphrase. And then this is the key piece here. If you want this SSID to be able to use the VPN, you must configure it in NAT mode. And in NAT mode here, I need to supply it with the information for the network that will be behind the AP. 
So whatever subnet and gateway I want to use, this is what the AP will use for any clients that are connected to that access point. And there we go, I've filled out all of the necessary information for the NAT mode on these APs. So when the clients connect, they will receive an address from this little pool here, and this dot one address will be the gateway for each of the clients connected to this AP, or any APs where you deploy this site template. And now I can see that this SSID has been added to the template. I'll go ahead and click back. So here you can see it says that I have undeployed save changes. I will need to deploy this Corp VPN change before I can enable the VPN feature for the access point. So I'll go ahead and schedule this deployment. And now that that's deployed, I'll go ahead and click the access point VPN tile. And then I will click the slider right here to enable it. And you'll notice here on the SSID list, the only one that's showing up is the SSID that has NAT mode enabled. So if you did have multiple SSIDs with NAT enabled, they would show up here, but all the ones without NAT simply won't show up in the list. So that's the only one available currently. And then for the Fireboxes, similar story, it pre-filters the list to show you Fireboxes that already have the mobile VPN with IkeV2 enabled. So if you don't have it set up already, you wouldn't see anything showing up here in the list. I'll go ahead and check the box here for this Firebox, and then click the Save button. And there we go. Now the feature is enabled, and because it's a VPN configuration, it was deployed immediately. And what's really nice about this is that because the Firebox and the AP are both cloud-managed, the cloud handled the VPN deployment to the AP. It set up the certificate, it created the necessary groups and user information, everything is done for you at this point. So to validate the configuration, I'm going to go over to Monitor, Devices, and then I will check the Firebox that I'm using for this connection. I'll go to Live Status, VPN, and then I will click on the Mobile VPN tab. And here we go, we can see that the user is connected. This is the access point and the serial number. And it shows you which IP address it's connecting from. This will be typically the public IP at the location where the access point is connecting from. And then the IP address here is the IP it is assigned from within the IkeV2 virtual pool. So I know that the VPN from the AP is now connected. And if I connect a client to this AP, I can send some traffic. That way we can see the sent and received bytes increasing. And I just refresh the page and there we go. The client is sending traffic through here. Everything's working as expected. And one more thing to note is if I go over to the Firebox configuration, and go back to the mobile VPN with IkeV2 settings, you'll see down here in the Groups section that there is another group automatically added. And this group name will match the template for the access point site. And because this group exists on the Firebox, I would be able to use this in policies if I needed to restrict access for the connections coming through those remote APs. You can filter the internet access, apply security services, everything you need to do. To wrap things up, you need to verify that there is nothing between the access point and the firebox that would prevent IPsec communication. Because these IkeV2 connections need to make it from the AP to the firebox, if there's another firewall or some router or some other device between them that's preventing that, then of course the VPN will not connect. It's also a good idea to test that the mobile VPN connection works from that location using a laptop or something else, just to make sure everything is good. And again, just another reminder here that when you set up an SSID that you'll be using for this remote access via the VPN, that that SSID must have NAT mode enabled. And lastly, 
check the mobile VPN monitoring to ensure that the connection was made and that the Firebox sees that access point and you can see if any data is being sent across. That way you know that everything is working as expected. For more information, please see the WatchGuard technical search.